From the mythical creatures like the Kraken to real creatures you've never even heard of, here are eight ancient sea creatures that could keep up with the Megalodon. 8. Brigmophoceta A clue to the Brigmophoceta's ferocity can be found in its name, which means biting sperm whale. Measuring up to 23 feet or 7 meters long, this carnivore was found in the area around modern-day Japan during the Miocene period. But some paleontologists believe some may have grown up to 40 feet or 12 meters long. Having teeth in both the upper and lower jaws probably helped the mid-sized whale hunt the fish, squid and smaller whales they normally dined on. But just because they were big doesn't mean they were untouchable, which means even the mighty Megalodon may have had an advantage. Since both predators swam in the ocean at the same time, it's not too far-fetched that these massive animals would have had run-ins from time to time. And even though the Meg was a ferocious beast, Brigmophoceta had enough bulk to give these ancient sharks a run for their money. The Brigmophoceta would have been able to ram the Megalodon and any predator with its large head when defending itself. They are also believed to have used sonar to track and disorient prey the way modern sperm whales do. Also similar to modern whales, they lived in pods and may have hunted in packs, giving them another advantage over fish, giant squid, and even the Megalodon. 7. Nothosaurus The Nothosaurus was a daunting marine reptile that prospered across the nearly 50 million years of the Triassic period. It was around 10 feet or 3 meters long with webbed front and back feet, flexible knees and ankles, and a long neck and tapered body. It also had a mouthful of sharp, needle-like teeth. Anything this beast considered prey didn't stand a chance. Paleontologists speculate that because of its resemblance to modern-day seals, the Nothosaurus may have spent some of its time on land. It's a known fact that this vertebrate breathed air, as evidenced by the two nostrils on its snout. Without a doubt, it was a sleek swimmer, but it wasn't as well adapted to a full-time life at sea. If you were to compare them to any species alive today, they were probably more similar to modern-day alligators, with both front and back legs, flexible knees and paddle feet that helped propel them through the water. The Nothosaurus is one of the most important marine reptiles in the fossil record. There are more than a dozen named species of this deep-sea predator. Fossilized remains of the Nothosaurus have been found all over the world, with fossil specimens discovered in Western Europe, Northern Africa and Eastern Asia. There is also speculation that Nothosaurus, or a closely related genus of Nothosaur, was the distant ancestor of the giant plesiosaurs Leoplurodon and Cryptoclitus, which were an order of magnitude bigger and more dangerous. The creature is known to be the earliest sea-living reptilian hunter of the waters. 6. The Lazamedon 100 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period, a creature by the name of Thalazomedon swam in the ancient seas. Back then, the world was a very different place. It would be almost unrecognizable to us today. Towering plants had evolved and were spreading across the planet, and Thalazomedon swam among the giant aquatic blooms of algae and flowers. It was a medium-sized plesiosaur, a large marine reptile that had a long, flexible neck, small head, paddle-like flippers, and a broad, flat body. Interestingly, half the length of Thalazomedon can be attributed to their necks, which were made up of 62 vertebrae. Some also had a tail fluke, which was a type of fin that helped them to steer in the water. The Lazamedon once swam in the western interior seaway, a sea that once divided North America into two parts. It had to battle against mosasaurs, a type of aquatic reptile, for existing fish stocks as well as other apex predators such as the Tylosaurus, which was known to have hunted other marine reptiles. One interesting find in the remains of the Lazamedon are stomach stones, which paleontologists believe they use to help digest food. Stretching around 40 feet or 12 meters in length, scientists were puzzled as to why a marine animal would need such a long neck. Some theorized they swam at the surface, occasionally darting their heads underwater to catch fish. Others believed they may have used their long neck to cast a sweeping movement to catch their food. But most agree the plesiosaur's neck wasn't actually that flexible. So why did they evolve to have such long necks? Could it be simply that it allowed them to get close to a school of fish high above, without the unsuspecting fish realizing a very tall dinosaur was standing beneath them? 
Instead of studying only their physical attributes, scientists have had better luck when analyzing gut contents of specimens with fish and octopus, as well as bottom dwellers like clams and crustaceans found in the stomach contents. It's clear Thalazomedon had a varied diet, and their distinctive look only tells part of the story of this long-necked predator. Number 5. Cedotherium Cedotherium represents one of the earliest members of the Mysticeti, which are more commonly known as baleen whales. The very first whales were actually predators that had sharp pointed teeth for catching and killing their unfortunate prey. Later whales like Cedotherium diversified to take advantage of an alternative food source and developed baleen to strain small organisms out of the water. Although small, these organisms would have been caught in such quantities that they would have provided ample sustenance for such a large creature. The 15-foot or 4.5-metre whale, known as Cetotherium, was a primitive animal that may have been smaller than modern humpback whales, but with the nickname Whale Beast, they could have easily taken on a predator like the Megalodon. Scientists believe that these animals dined on smaller organisms, which they would strain through their baleen, a type of tooth similar to human fingernails that sieve prey. Of course, in order to do that, Cetotherium would have spent a lot of time floating near the water's surface. Some specimens were found to have compression damage to their vertebra, which researchers believe may have been the result of impacts with larger predators. Imagine a megalodon spotting the whale skimming the surface above. It would be the perfect opportunity for the massive shark to ram the whale in the belly from below, which would have resulted in the whale's backbone being pushed into a severe arc. Stunned and winded, the whale would not have been able to escape, making them a sitting duck to the meg, who one could imagine would take the opportunity to move in for the kill. Believed to have swum in the waters around Eurasia and North America, Cetotherium went extinct at the end of the Pliocene period, living some 15 to 10 million years ago. But some experts believe members of the Cetotherium family may still be alive today, including the pygmy right whale. 4. Ramphosuchus Sometimes all it takes is a good set of teeth to defend yourself, and that's what the prehistoric Ramphosuchus had going for it. A Miocene-era crocodile with a thinner and longer snout than its modern-day counterparts, Ramphosuchus had a bite that would have posed a threat to any predator. The first discovery of this species came in 1840 by a team working in India. After uncovering skull fragments and analyzing them, they were revealed to be from a massive crocodile. Ramphosuchus fossils have been found in the USA, South America, India, and Africa. Ranging from 26 to 42 feet, or 8 to 12 meters in length, with modern crocs only coming in around 20 feet, or 6 meters, it's easy to see how this ancient beaked crocodile would have posed a serious threat to other animals. Even more luckily, Ramphosuchus had thick, leathery skin that gave it extra protection, even from other predators' formidable attacks. Even though Ramphosuchus is a reptile that belongs to the order of crocodiles, the species is more closely related to the gaviol, which is a different species of croc that has the same distinctive long, narrow mouth as the Ramphosuchus. This prehistoric beast ate not only fish, but other animals too, and with thick paws and gruesome claws, creatures, even the megalodon, would have thought twice before getting close to this one. 3. Leviathan Leviathan, named after a massive sea monster in the Old Testament, was a monstrous whale that weighed up to 50 tons, or 100,000 pounds. With a 10-foot or 3-meter skull and a length of 50 feet or 15 meters from head to tail, this is the largest predatory whale of the Miocene era and would have been right up the top of the food chain alongside the Megalodon. The Leviathan is an ancestor of the modern sperm whale, but much more fierce. It's hard to tell how long Leviathan was around because not that many fossil specimens have been uncovered, but it makes sense they would have encountered the Megalodon at some point, given that both predators would have been trying to dominate underwater life 13 million years ago. The Leviathan was the master of them all, with the longest teeth of any prehistoric animal, which would have come in handy when tangling with the Megalodon for underwater supremacy. Stretching some 14 inches or 35 centimeters, their teeth would have made tearing into the flesh of their prey easy, but they also had a bit of a trick when it came time to hunt. With something known as a spermaceti organ that allowed them to not only communicate with other whales, but to use it for echolocation, they would have been able to hear predators like the stealthy megalodon long before it made an appearance. It's believed to have dined mostly on dolphins, seals, and other smaller whales, it was a dwindling food supply, and rising ocean temperatures proved to be the leviathan's undoing. Of course, the Meg also fell victim to the same fate. 
proving that even these underwater giants had a bit of a weak spot. 2. Kraken You may have thought the Kraken was just the star of monster movies, but it is actually a very real possibility that a giant squid beast once lived in the ancient seas. Maybe it's not exactly the monster from Legends that was said to be able to swallow ships and sailors, but a giant squid did, and perhaps still does, exist today. According to study researcher Mark McMenamin, a paleontologist at Mark Holyoke College in Massachusetts, the Kraken, which would have been nearly 100 feet or 30 meters long, or twice the size of the colossal squid, Mesonicatusis, likely drowned or broke the necks of prehistoric creatures like the ichthyosaurs before dragging the corpses to its lair. Proof of the Kraken and its horrid attacks come from markings left on the bones of the remains of nine 45-foot or 14-meter ichthyosaurs which lived during the Triassic, a period that lasted from 248 million to 206 million years ago. Even today, we have species like the Pacific octopus attacking sharks, so it's not far-fetched to think that millions of years ago, a kraken beast went up against the megalodon. Not only that, but there are tales as recently as 200 years ago of this creature still in our oceans. There are stories about unlucky sailors who mistake the beast for an island and try and land on it, these seagoers would then be dragged down to the bottom of the ocean. 1. Dunkleosteus The extinct Dunkleosteus genus encompasses 10 species of armoured fish that constitute some of the largest creatures of their type that ever existed in the Devonian era. The biggest among them measuring up to 28.8 feet or 8.79 metres long and weighing as much as 4.4 tonnes or 4 metric tonnes. They lived around 380 million years ago long before the megalodon emerged around 20 million years ago. But if there was any ancient sea creature that would have been able to take on the megalodon, the Dunkleosteus would have been it. It had armor that was 5 centimeters thick, covering its entire body, and it had a bite force stronger than any animal. If any animal ever stood a chance against the megalodon, it would be the Dunkleosteus. With its armored exterior made up of giant bone plates on its head and jaw, this prehistoric creature was most likely the largest fish in the Devonian era. First discovered by an amateur paleontologist in 1867 along the Lake Erie cliffs at the town of Sheffield Lake, the specimen came in at a whopping 1,000 pounds or 450 kilos. A toothless fish, they more than made up for this trait by using their armored jaw plates when tangling with both predator and prey. The plates were sculpted into fangs with long slicing edges that would grind up against each other and even sharpen themselves. And their 26 feet or 8 meters of tank-like exterior not only protected them from attacks but allowed them to eat any animal it wanted. As researchers continued to study the ancient fish, they also discovered their jaws had the ability to open and close so fast that they created a type of suction that allowed them to pull in their prey. Sadly, two mass extinction events eventually took down Dunkleosteus, wiping out marine and land animals, destroying their ecosystems, and causing not just Dunkleosteus, but up to 80% of all species on Earth to go extinct. Thanks for watching. What do you think of these ancient sea creatures? Would you like to know more about any of them? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.